Gen Z has an identity crisis and we need to talk about it. Hey guys, what's up, it's Emergency and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today we are back and we're talking about Gen Z once again. But today we're gonna be talking about Gen Z's alleged identity crisis and how things like microtrends and extremely personalized algorithms kind of strip away individual identity and plays for different aesthetics and vibes that can be and have been used to replace actual personality traits. I feel like this is an interesting point of conversation because I feel like usually when we talk about Gen Z and how Gen Z has been referenced and talked about in the past, we're really made out to be or seem like this monolithic entity that thinks the same way. I'm so sorry, first of all, this aesthetic is so on point, but I love this like little sweater vest has the same sort of values and personality traits when in reality like any other generation that just isn't the case mm. and for gen z specifically i'd say that we're so individualized based on the content that we consume and the specific media that we see day to day mm. that makes us so different from other generations because there's a new micro trend that comes out every other week that people really align themselves with and make their entire personality for a set of time before jumping and leaping onto another one there's a lot to talk about and we're gonna get into it so if you are new around here hi my name's remy and welcome back to emergency remy? a little series that i run on this channel sorry did he say remy so if you are new around here, hi, my name's Remy and welcome back to Remy, okay. To Emergency, a little series that I run on this oh, channel where we talk cute. about all things Gen Z and media, pop culture, and the internet. And if you like content like this, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the content that I have coming out on this channel every single week, as well as leaving a like on this video and follow me on my socials at Emergency on Instagram, nice, TikTok, nice, and Twitter. Nice, nice, and if you're interested in some early access and completely exclusive content, mm -hmm. consider hitting the join button and becoming a channel member today to get two exclusive members only videos a month, as well nice. as early access to every single one of these videos. But enough stuff, let's talk about why Gen Z has an identity crisis. Now, like I said before, Gen Z is not a monolith. It's commonly said that Gen Z has these core themes values, understandings, and like outlooks on life, society, and culture, which I don't think is necessarily true anymore. I feel like a big issue that isn't talked about online is that Gen Z doesn't really have a common culture or a common understanding or belief on things because of the rise of individualized algorithms. We don't have a collective cultural understanding, even when it comes to things like pop culture, because there are so many things like microtrends, microcultures, and different facets of the internet that people can go down rabbit holes in and be fascinated and enraptured by. They create these different bubbles where you just don't see a lot of other things. What did he say? What did he say? I thought I heard him say something. I feel like he might have said a bubble. Did he say a bubble? I just kidding. He said a bubble. Let's fucking go bubbles in the chat, bro. Bubbles in the chat. The other people around your age, location, and community may. And that's something that I've been realizing more and more, and the internet will continuously remind me of this, is that we don't all consume the same content. We really do. A fucking men. A fucking men do all live in our little bubbles. And sometimes we're lucky when we have those bubbles intersect with one another. <laughs> I saw a lot of discourse online. Oh, what he's, oh. <laughs> I love him. I absolutely adore him. He's my best friend now. Fairly recently, specifically when it came to the Billboard Top 10 charts being released for the week of April 1st, where a lot of people were gagged to see what the top 10 were with the only female artists on the charts being Ariana Grande with We Can't Be Friends and the rest being male dominated with like rap and a mix of other stuff. And I run in the gay bubbles. I run in the circles with the And he's gay? This is our new best friend. This is our new best friend. Is. So I'm not really tapped into that facet of the internet either. So I was kind of gagged to see that top 10 list because like, where all these people come from? <laughs> of course I know who they are. Well, most of them, the ones. But I had no idea that there was a new music release. And these aren't like no-name artists. Like these are huge artists. Like Future, Kendrick Lamar, and Metro Boomin. Like these are huge artists. Mm. It's just that I and many others aren't on that side of the internet very often. So we're not tapped in. Well, there's a disconnect there with other people that are around my age and are obsessed with that. And that's just one example. A better example that we saw a little earlier this year came from the Grammys when they were talking about mm. who's winning the Best New Artist Award. And it really showed like how someone could be super Super famous to one demographic of people in one aspect of the internet, whereas another artist or another creative can just be seemingly unknown. Because that week there was a ton of discourse over whether or not Victoria Monet deserved to win that award over the other people that were nominated, with some people being like, who even is Victoria Monet? When I think that they Ingrid says, how could you not tell he's gay? I don't stereotype Ingrid, unless I think they're autistic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just thought, I thought he was queer, maybe bisexual, maybe pansexual, maybe a lot of things. Look at what he's wearing. He could just be a fashionable, you know, I don't even know what I was thinking. You're right. Why didn't I know? He, of course he's queer. Of course he's queer. What was I thinking? But you know what? These Gen Z boys be different. I'm sorry. No, I take it back. Fuck you. These Gen Z boys be different. Have you seen some of these Gen Z boys? They build different. These straight Gen Z boys be making me question. I think I know and then I find out they're straight. So you know what? But you're right. Of course, of course he's queer. Like, of course he's queer. What am I thinking? They were hoping that someone named Noah Khan would win. Different strokes, different folks. Mm. But we're seeing a disconnect there where you can live in a world where you know who Noah Khan is, but don't know who Victoria Monet is. Or if you live in a world where you- Fuck, I don't know who any of these- Victoria Monet, who? Who? Don't know who Victoria Monet is, but you can be a Noah Khan stan. And I feel like- I don't know who any of those people are, but I love that. I love bubbles. I love bubbles. This difference of opinion and just like general understanding for who we are as a generation, who we like, mm. what we like, is so well exemplified in artists and celebrities. Because unlike times of the past, it's so possible that you can be a very successful celebrity with millions and millions of followers, sold out tour. 
who in my audience the other day was like, who's Selena Gomez? And I was like, damn, like even I know who Selena Gomez is. And that was before my generation technically, but damn, you know, you always think, oh, everybody knows who that is. And then it's not. And then you judge. <gasps> Did you guys ever have this happen to you where you're like, oh, I don't know who that is. And they're like, you don't know who that is? Like you grew up like homeschooled? Are you Amish? It's like people think everyone knows what they know. That's no, we are culturally diverse. No matter how much the world talks about diversity, no matter how much conservatives complain, we talk about diversity. Nobody gets that we're diverse. Nobody understands. That's the whole point of bubbles is we all live in different bubbles. We live in bubbles where people know who Ariana Grande is and people live in bubbles who don't know who she is. That's the point. Like that is the point that I think so many people are missing is no matter how much we talk about diversity, people have no idea what that means. It means people aren't monoliths. People are different. We have different expectations. So when you say there's no way that happens, that's not what people do. No, no, okay. Yes, oh, Ciela, great point. Not everyone grew up with the Disney Channel, okay? Very true. I remember when we got the Disney Channel, when we got cable, but like, you know, not just like the basic channels. When we got like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, it was like the biggest day of our life. I was probably 12 years old. I don't remember. I would have to ask my parents, but I was like, I remember when we got Toonami, it was like a life, Cartoon Network was life-changing, life-changing for us growing up, you know? So, you know, I get it. Like, I remember as a kid, finally being able to watch like cool channels, like, oh, the amazing channels, <gasps> the good channels, like, oh my God, like the, you know what I mean? debut number one on the charts and still have seemingly no one know who you are mm -hmm. simply because people aren't tapped into that side of pop culture of the internet yep. didn't used to be the case like back in the day not that i would like know from firsthand experience but from what i've heard if someone had a number one song on the charts everyone would hear it because of radio play and they would be a superstar like they would be a household name people would know who they are for better or for worse whether mm. or not you like my family used to listen to the radio every day and specifically would listen to music radio every day and i do remember we stopped I remember it happening. Yeah, I remember because I I mean, I remember just driving to the beach and listening to the radio and listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers and just anyone who from that generation was, you know, popular. But yeah, I remember. I don't know. I had the shuffle. I had the shuffle. And then I had a phone. Well, then I had LimeWire. When did it go? I do remember my whole life we had the radio on. Commercials. We knew all the jingles. We knew the call-ins. I've called into the radio so many times in my life. I've been on country, country radio. I've been on Disney radio. I've been on talk radio. I mean, I was one of those people who like, hello? And then I would like, you know what I mean? I was like obsessed with calling into radio shows. I haven't listened to the radio girl in so long, you know? like them or not, you would know their name, you would know who they are. Because there was just this level of superstardom that existed back in that day. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, because there are so many artists, because we're able to have so much choice and agency over who we support, who we listen to, and what is presented in front of us, that's just not necessarily the case anymore. Which I feel like is a reason why we don't have as many superstars, as many standout new A-list celebrities like we used to. And I keep hinting at this, but I feel like one of the major things that caused this change, this shift, is the rise of individualized and personalized algorithms and feeds. And for me personally, I first noticed this sort of personalized feed thing happening with Instagram. Like back before when Instagram used to be primarily chronological, like you'd just see posts in the order in which they were posted mm -hmm. and based on who you follow. But then they had that one shift where it was kind of out of order and it was based on your engagement and who you were more likely to engage with and not who you followed. And then they put in people that you don't even follow at all, but they think you would like and they think would suit your vibe. Like that was my first introduction, at least that I was conscious of, of like a personalized, individualized feed. And at first I didn't really like that because I'm like, I want the control in this. Like I, I want to see what I know I want to see. I want to see the people that I follow in the order that they post them so I can keep up and know what's going on in their mm -hmm. lives. But then at least for me, it shifted when the algorithm started getting a little good. And I was like, oh wait, I actually don't mind the way that you're doing this. You seem to know my interests pretty well. And now I kind of don't even bat an eye because it's it's a hit for me right now at least. <laughs> and then when we're talking about personalized individualized feeds, it's impossible to not mention TikTok because I feel like TikTok is like the more recent example. I'm not gonna lie, TikTok is so good at giving me what I wanna watch. It's just like, if I'm watching something on TikTok, like my husband and I will sit there and be like, we have to reset the algorithm. And we will do it in like in real time, just like until we get the right videos we like, then we like, and then we find the tag and then we keep going. And then all of a sudden our feed, like I can change my feed in 30 seconds on TikTok and the algorithm will start giving me what I want. It is so good. Like I'm not even gonna play with you. TikTok is so good.
of like a hyper personalized feed. And this is when I started to notice that content was starting to get more niche and that people I was around started relating less and less with the content that I would personally consume. Like they're just niche references that other people won't get because they're not on that side of TikTok. They're not on my algorithm, my for you page. And I feel like contrasting that with another short form video app, like say videos from like mm. the Vine era where nothing was really super personalized and it was just a general feed of content that was really popular. Bro. We all pretty much saw the same Vines, the same Was that Daystorm, binds. right? Whereas now with TikTok, it's very easy to just be in your own bubble and be on your own side of TikTok and not see something that's trending or popular on another side of the app. And I mentioned this in previous videos before, but the same can be said about YouTube. Like YouTube had an evolution where it became more and more personalized with things like having your home tab, having like a for you-esque page now. That wasn't the case before. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, like in the earlier years of YouTube, you would at least know of all the popular YouTubers that were on the platform. Like if you were on the internet at that time and say like, I don't know, Shane Dawson back in the day put out a YouTube video, you saw it. And yeah. if you hadn't seen it, you'd at least heard of it. Or you'd see someone reacting to that video, making a commentary on that video. Like you'd be in the universe and you'd know about it versus now where that's just not necessarily always the case. And we've seen this continued push for more personalized content, not just on social media, but in all the content that we consume. Like I said, the personalized YouTube homepage, even streaming services have become personalized. Even TV and film have been more personalized with the rise of streaming services having personalized recommendations. So the shift from cable just showing whatever was available and everyone's watching that, people have more agency and choice over the content that they consume and what they're watching. So it's a lot easier now. So instead of before, we're not seeing a popular movie or show. Make that is so, oh, bro. Okay, I called up my bestie and she and I have known each other since we were kids. So we came up the same, same neighborhood. Um, I moved away for a part time, but like we grew up in Southern California together. So no big deal. So basically same, same atmosphere, both grew up in the suburb, uh, moved to the country that eventually became a suburb. So no big deal. We, um, we, we came up watching the same TV shows in a sense, like whether you're Republican or conservative. So if her family was Democrat. My family was Republican. You had the same news guys. Everybody knew who was on the news. You each watched both sides or at least you had like a bias and you moved towards a direction, but you all read the same newspapers. Oh my God. You all had the same like kind of understanding of what was going on. There wasn't a lot of availability to like go very hard into a different bubble. I mean, you were always in a different bubble, but you weren't like Republicans and Democrats at one point growing up were kind of the same, not the same, but we weren't that far apart. We weren't as divided as we are now. Like you have, like it is true. Now it's always been divided. It, the division looks differently. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that in some ways it's always absolutely been divided, just not divided in the same way that it is now, right? I think I talked about this on a panel. Um, but yeah, it's it's not the same, but it's, you know, it's interesting. It's like this fascinating to me versus now, gosh, I talked to my bestie about this. We used to be so in the Hollywood bubble, like celebrity bubble, movie bubble. We haven't watched a new movie. We haven't watched new media in so long the way we used to. The awards, I used to go to her house and we would watch the Oscars. Like not every year, but on occasion. And I was, I don't even know what's going on. Like the idea of knowing what's in the best picture, my husband and I were doing the crossword the other day and they're like nominated best feature film of the year. And we were like, fuck, I don't know. Like I fucking don't know. And it was so interesting, like, you know, we all live in bubbles, like I say, and then we certainly form our own bubbles. But yeah, I'm not in that bubble anymore where I know what's on the New York Times bestseller list. I don't, I would have to look it up versus it was just a part of my whole life. I used to wake up, guys, I used to literally read every book on the New York Times bestseller list. I would wake up and then I would see like, what's going on in the news today? I would like wake up, like this was my life. What's going on in major media? Like what's going on in the world? And then I went, smaller and smaller into my own bubble because like obviously I wasn't being fulfilled in those bubbles but isn't that kind of amazing I have no idea that crossword was fucking exhausting me I was like oh god I don't know what the answer is and the fact that I don't know what the answer is is crazy and even my besties like I can't believe I don't know what's going on in like Hollywood right now I was like I know we're just so disconnected from it you know it's kind of interesting like you seem like out of touch and out the loop with just general pop culture. <sighs> Nowadays, if you haven't seen a popular show or a popular movie, you may have just not heard of it because it wasn't trending on your side of the internet or wasn't being promoted on your algorithm. And most interestingly, we've seen a dramatic increase in the personalization of music consumption. With the rise of music apps like Spotify that directly give you individualized True. playlists full of new and old music, people's music tastes are expanding while also being more niche than they've ever been, if that makes sense. Like it's so much easier now to be tapped into a wide array of music from artists that everyone knows to artists that may just be getting started out which can essentially make everyone the like 
underground listener unintentionally, which is really cool for aspiring artists because there's more widespread discoverability of their music and content. But in terms of day-to-day -day interpersonal relatability for like what we as a generation are like, we and our community of people in Gen Z like, it makes it kind of difficult because we don't all like the same things because we're not all consuming the same content. And with these different means of content consumption and different forms of content being consumed, enters the micro trends and micro cultures. Now, typically the phrase micro trend is used in a fashion context of like a micro fashion trend or like a fad that comes in for like a year or a season and then comes out. I'm using micro trend more liberally, but also including just like general trends that we're seeing online and on social media. Getting into different subgroups, subcultures, and sub communities is a lot more common and a lot easier than before. And in that we've sort of created this lust for an aesthetic. Like mm. it's cool and almost coveted to have an aesthetic that you fall under and to encapsulate you so that your general interests, general vibes, and look to you can be described as blank aesthetic. And these aesthetics can come and go and can be more niche or more mainstream than others, with popular recent aesthetics being things like the Aaliyah Core aesthetic, the Coquette Clean Girl aesthetic, It Boy aesthetic, Mob Wife Cottage Core. Like you can you can go on and on and on. There are different aesthetics oh you can God. choose to fall under. And each of those aesthetics kind of come I'm with sorry, their own sorry, was that too little but what? Aesthetic, the coquette clean girl aesthetic, it boy aesthetic, mob wife. Is that Dula Lipa in the middle? Is she doing mob wife? That's so funny. I I forget who Dula Lipa is all the time, but then I don't. And I really liked her Barbie song, actually. I like I love the soundtrack for Barbie. Cottage core, like you can you can go <sighs> on and on and on. There are different aesthetics that you can choose to fall under. And each of those aesthetics kind of come with their own community, their own look. Wait, Kay, you said Brittany's childhood experiences and upbringing and family life is so similar to my own. It's always incredible hearing the similarities. I think that's why you understand my brain pretty well, because sometimes you'll be able to like word things better than me or but you understand me really, really well. I've noticed that I try to pay attention to like who feels like, oh, yeah. And Kay is like my one of my favorite translators. I feel like Kay translates my brain really, really well. And it's probably that overlap with lived experience. Yeah, we probably do have a lot more in common, which means that when I say stuff, you get it. Like when I say like you should be a team, like on a team with your husband or wife or your partner. And then somebody says like, what? What does that mean? And I'm like, what's going on? What's happening? And then I realize like, OK, OK, you didn't like grow up in that bubble. But see how we always all think we're part of the majority? Like that's not how people were raised or, oh, how about this? You know, the cheating thing where I'm like, you can't be cheating out here, bro. Your reputation is shattered if you cheat. Somebody said in the comment section of my video, that's how it is in my small town bubble. And I was like, not that I grew up in a small town bubble, but I did grow up in a suburb. And then I did grow up in a religious community. And then I did grow up like with the, you're always friends in the neighborhood. Guys, if anyone in my suburb neighborhood of Orange County, California cheated, it would be a fucking scandal. And it doesn't matter if you're secular or religious, like you can't be out here cheating, bro. Okay, it's super scandalous as it should be, right? But then, you know, I did move to the country when I was like 15 and I was raised in a very Southern California country place, which is now a suburb. It's built up. Now it's like super built up and there's like so many people there. But yeah, like it's a small community. People know you. What about your extended family, like your relatives, your aunties and uncles? You're going to go to the fucking barbecue and not have someone look at you and be like, mm-hmm. We know what you did. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You're, you're not going to show up to the get together. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but in in religious communities, being gay and and sleeping on your like cheating on your partner, that's not good. Uh, I don't know if you know that cheating is one of the Ten Commandments. It's a pretty big offense against God. So, yeah, of course, when I say I was raised religious, when I was raised Catholic, I mean yeah, you don't be cheating out here. Like, that's what's crazy is when I, especially when I say, what kind of Catholic were you raised as? Because a lot of people were raised Catholic, but they're not raised Catholic. Like, they don't pay attention. I was raised the kind of Catholic. I was raised the kind of Catholic where you weren't allowed to say, oh my God, in the household. Because it's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. I grew up in a household where like, you weren't allowed to say, oh my God, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, go to hell. Um, damn you. I was not allowed. We were not allowed to talk that way growing up. So you have to remember when I say like I was raised Catholic, I mean like 10 commandments, follow the 10 commandments Catholic. Okay. That's, that's, that's for real, real. Okay.
their own, their own like, oh, how you can look like this. These certain places and activities give a certain aesthetic. So if you want to be this aesthetic, you can participate in these things, essentially forming personalities and identities for people, which isn't inherently a bad thing. I know I kind of made that seem like it was like, oh, you shouldn't use social media to build your personality, but that's not inherently a bad thing. It's just something to notice because it's new. In a blog post written by Jasmine Harris talking about Gen Z subcultures, stating that though it's another space where they're happy to move freely between various groups, aesthetic subcultures still give a sense of identity. It's not just going to the gym, but they're a Barry's boot camp goer, not just a make but a Glossier girl. And in this context, they're talking more about how there's more so brand allegiance with these different subcultures and groups. But what can be pulled for this is the need to label and create these identities around these different interests, hobbies, mm. to essentially create these identities for ourselves. Like you're not just someone that likes neutrals, putting your hair in a slick back bun. In journaling, no, you're a clean girl. You're not just someone who's black and likes nicer things and experiences, you're black girl or black boy luxury. And like I said, these aesthetics, Ooh. these categories aren't bad things. In fact, they're really convenient and they're really fun, especially when they're working for you and you feel like you- Yes, ma'am, what do I always say? What do I always say? Oh, I love this video. Oh, guys, I chose really good videos today. What the fuck? These are the best videos I chose in a long time. These are great videos. What do I always say about like knowing your category? It's playing to your strength. I know I'm not high elegance. It's not my vibe. It makes me uncomfortable. It's not me. That doesn't mean I'm bad or less than because I'm not high elegance, right? And it doesn't mean people who are high elegance aren't good people. It just means like we're not doing the same thing. It's not the vibe, you know? And I think there's something so beautiful about that, knowing who you are, knowing what category you can fall into and not being trapped by the category. You can always be somebody else. But when I say like play to who you truly are, the very most authentic version of you can still be categorized. And that's beautiful. Yes, genres of identity. Yes. That's why I love the nuance of like when people are like, I love rock music. I'm like, which kind? Which one? Who? You know, which which version of rock music? Like the idea that there's only one variation of rock music, no girl. Have you seen Miley Cyrus's recent shift into like 80s rock vibes? I love this for her. I think it's such a vibe. I think she was born to raise hell and born to do this. You know, Dolly Parton is her godmother. You know, Joan Jett is like one of her friends. Miley should have been born in the 80s, bro. She should have fucking been up there with them. You know what I'm saying? I love that she's recreating the vibe. I think it's so her. But isn't that funny how she had to like be that person to be that person? It couldn't have happened when she was busy being Miley Cyrus. You know, that wasn't her time. I just love that for her though. Oh my God, it just makes me so, guys, I get so happy and excited when people figure out like your genre or like what category you're in or like where you're supposed to end up. That's why I say like, there's nothing wrong with being a goth family. There's nothing wrong with being a religious family. There's nothing wrong with being a punk family or a high elegant family. As long as you know your kids might choose something different and that's okay. But it's also okay to know like that's the vibe. And even when we have families, like my family had a vibe. My parents would take us all dressed in the vibe to church, to Costco. Like my parents had a vibe and everybody knew our family growing up. Every family I knew and especially in Catholic church, like everybody has a vibe. Everybody raises their kids differently, but there's definitely like an understanding of like the vibe of the family, especially when you grow up in a suburb where there's definitely like, di like not a lot of diversity, obviously in suburbs, but enough diversity where you're like, okay. And then there's like the aesthetic vibe. You know what I mean? you can upkeep that aesthetic and upkeep that vibe. I'm just saying that while that can be true, it is also true that the reliance and the yearning to have or fit into an aesthetic can cause, can contribute to this identity crisis that a lot of people in Gen Z face when it comes to figuring out who you are as a person and who you truly are outside of these myriad of different aesthetics that are out there. I know a lot of people can feel isolated like they don't have a set identity or don't really know who they are if they don't fit into an aesthetic, if they don't resonate with an aesthetic or have a vibe that they necessarily fit into yet. And of course, having a sense of style or set of interests is important, but the reliance on having this outward facing image to have people categorize and label you as an in it shouldn't always be this aspiration i'm sorry this video is so good but courtney says i was considered a stoner in high school and i never smoked or drank in high school no sex until i was an adult it's funny when people assume things about you just based on your persona or personality and clothing my mom i remember my mom i was like a grown adult and she goes tell me the truth did you ever do drugs or sex in high school i was like no i didn't smoke weed till i was 28 years old i didn't have sex till i was 22 years old I literally, this persona of me growing up, this even image of me on the internet is so short-sighted. Not that I think you should be shamed for your body count or anything, but yeah, even growing up as a teenager and all because I asked questions. I was like, well, what's sex like? Why do you do porn? What's that like? People were like, she must be doing those things. I was like, what's weed like? What's drugs like? What is it like? 
And people are like, Brittany, Brittany's kind of bubbly and crazy. And like, she asks a lot of questions. She's so interested in these subjects. She must be doing it. No, I just wanted to read about them. I was just wondering why people did them. And if I wanted to engage with them, I didn't have sex till I was 22. I barely even made out with anyone until I was 22, like genuinely. And then of course, right when I moved out of my parents' house, 21, I did everything I wanted to do. I started doing like different experimentations. I drank a lot because that's what people were doing at the time. And then I did Selvia, which was like, ooh, oh my God, Selvia, whoa. And then weed at 28. And then, you know what I mean? It's just kind of funny that people have an image of you and they're like, you must have done this. No, girl. I'm just curious. It doesn't mean I'm dabbling in everything. But also, even if I did, what are you trying to do? Shame me for it? Girl. Inspirational thing. It's okay to grow and to change and to not necessarily always fit in within these aesthetics or in these different subcultures. But as you grow and as you learn, it shouldn't be like you hop from aesthetic to aesthetic, hop from vibe to vibe. Like you should be free to grow and expand who you are outside of that and shouldn't feel pressure to fall into a niche. And I feel like some of that really stems from the whole like need for everyone to be a brand and everyone to have their own brand, which could be an entirely different video about the commodification and monetization of personalities and who we are as people. So if you want to see a full video on that, let me know because mm. that sounds kind of fun. But I feel like a lot of people are having like this identity crisis because like who are we outside of the content? media that we consume on a daily basis. Like, who are we really outside of that? And some might say these aesthetics and microtrends or whatever are really great for like finding community of people that are like-minded and are interested in similar things. But while yes, that can also be true, there's also irony in that, in the sense like the deeper that you go down these pipelines, the deeper that you go down into these aesthetics and get more and more niche, the fewer and fewer people you can actually relate to until you get down to a really niche down form of your aesthetic of the content that you consume that really is personal to you and can only really suit you. <laughs> and while that's an extreme case and not the case for everybody, it's just like a conversation of how much is too much and how far do we go with with individualized content mm. and just the sense of individualism as opposed to something that's more communal and community oriented. Because as we talked about in previous videos in this series, Gen Z is also going through a loneliness epidemic in terms of like being able to relate with each other, be in community with each other, and in make genuine connections. And siloing ourselves off in the content that we consume can contribute to that because there's less for us to necessarily relate with. If we're not watching similar things, we're able to make similar references. And I feel like looking forward in the future, if we're not more intentional about that, things are only going to get more so personalized, especially with the increased integration of AI in the content and media that we consume. It's eventually going to get down to a science where content and media that's served to you is specifically tailored to you one-to-one. -one. Like algorithms are only going to get better at serving you the content that they know you're going to want to watch. But yeah, is Gen Z in an identity crisis that can't be fixed and we're all just so messed up? No, but I do still feel like we are less holistically connected than people have been cracking us up to be. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because I feel like we're matters a lot of us can come together to have similar values i guess but in terms of the content that we consume and the references that we make and our just general interests we're kind of all over the place and again that's okay well that's all i got for today y'all let that. me know in the comments what you mm. think about this do you feel like gen z has an idea what a great video oh my gosh make sure you guys like it check it out i'm subscribing girl oh my gosh i fucking love this this is so good this is so good Oh, I picked great videos today. Fuck. I'm amazing. I picked absolutely lovely videos today. Great video. Really loved it. I think this commentary about bubbles is so important. And I do think, you know, I should move just, I'm going to, you know, the levels thing pisses people off too much. I really got to focus on the bubbles concept because I think it's much easier to digest for people. <laughs> like, <laughs> which proves the levels more. That's what I'm saying. Like, how are the levels untrue if I literally have to switch my the way I talk because it upsets people because they live in a bubble like how much more you know what I'm saying like it's just like oh am I mm, okay anyways it's like fine I will switch up my language but oh my gosh you know so I think I'm going to focus much more on the bubbles because I think this idea is so it just resonates with better it makes people feel less judged which is so funny because it's not about judging you have to let go of the attachment of being judged Unless somebody's going to stone you to death for being judged. You know what I mean? Like, you need to let go of being judged, okay? No, no, no. I'm not taking it away. No, no, no. Celia. Like, I'm not taking it away. I just understood the levels. No, I'm not taking it away. I'm just going to add and focus on the bubbles to, like, allow that to be a narrative. It seems like it allows people to process more. The levels are great. I'm going to keep it in the videos. I'm going to keep reference it. Don't worry. I'm just going to put more of an emphasis on bubbles, even though everyone panics when I say bubble. Look how many videos we watch where they're like bubble, bubble, bubble. I just want people to know how profound of an idea that is and how much you can change your life by recognizing that if you want to change your life. Okay. If you want to change your life, this is an opportunity. I mean, look at the way he just talked about bubbles. Like if you know you can change a bubble, like you can change an aesthetic 
picking a bubble that speaks to your core self is absolutely going to be the journey to your joy. Okay. We're not aiming for happiness, which is an emotion. We're aiming for our joy. So when the world melts around us, when the world freaks out around us, you know, we don't lose ourselves to the world. Da, 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 da.